Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com. In this video, we are going to look at how to create a top 10 list using pivot tables. So on the screen at the moment, I have this interactive sales dashboard that has been created using a couple of pivot charts and then the interactive element provided by these two slices one for country, one for years. So when I click a country, such as Mexico or such as Canada, I can see both charts changing as they are controlled by these slices. I can do a similar thing for years. Not sure if I'm gonna get anything in 2014. If I, I've got a little bit uh, for years and country. Let me clear those two filters or two slices. What I'm looking at adding though to this dashboard is the top 10 selling products. Now these two pivot charts at the moment, and indeed the top 10 products that we're going to create in this video, this has all been generated by this list of orders sheet, where I have loads of sales, loads of orders, and in the product name column, column F, I have, yeah, the products, I have 77 products. Now I can tell you that. And what I don't want is on my dashboard, I don't want 77 products there. I have very limited space. So what I'm after is just the top 10 products for the country or for the year or both or whatever I, I'm asking for really, or somebody else is asking for. So let's begin by removing this shape I've put in there. So I'll just put this little shape, little placeholder, so that I knew that's where that was going. I'm going to delete that. And what I'll do is I'll go to my list of orders sheet, click inside that table, and I'm going to insert a pivot table. I'll put this on an existing worksheet from the same data source that the others are using, and I'll specify the location as my dashboard sheet, and probably that cell there. What is that? B18. We can always move this stuff around after, you know, it's not do or die uh, decisions at this point. If I click OK though, that will create this pivot table in the area that I was hoping for and I have left vacant for. In the pivot table itself, on the field list on the right, I'm going to specify product name. I'm going to put that in the rows area. It lists all 77 products. And then total sales value so that it sums uh, that figure, that value, for all 77 products currently in alphabetical order. Now my next step was to quickly change the format in here, as that is not a good format in for these values. A little bit misleading in some respects. Uh, when you look at some of these, you know, that value looks bigger than that value when it's not, and so on. So let me right mouse click on any of those values, number format, and I'll put it into the accounting format uh, using Sterling, which is what I'm working with. Now that's done. If I want the top 10 list, it's important that I sort it largest to smallest by values. At the moment, it's alphabetical by the name of the product. I'm going to do this by right clicking again. On a cell that contains information I want to sort it by and I'm going to sort it largest to smallest that's now done that is the 77 products largest to smallest and then my last step to do the top 10 filter is to go for the little filter the field filter value filters and top 10 in here, you have the opportunity to say, you know, top 15, top 5. We can also change items to percent, you know, top 5%, top 10%. I'm after the top 10 items, so I'm happy with the defaults here. And I'll click OK. And now I have my list, uh, which I'm interested in to, uh, to resize a little bit. Because at the moment, these are the top 10 products of all years, all countries. 
I kind of know that if I go into a specific country, uh, there are products with bigger names than the ones mentioned at the moment. So I'm widening the column a little bit to accommodate for those potential names. Not worrying about being too accurate right now. You know, maybe that looks a bit silly at the moment. You know, if I was doing this properly, I would, you know, give a little bit more attention. But that will do for this, this quick video, this quick purpose for now. However, at the moment, if I come out of that for the moment, my slicers are not affecting that list. I see they're still changing both charts, but not affecting that list. So let me click on, I have a way of doing this really. I could click on my pivot table, my top 10 table, click on the analyze tab above, and I can go into filter connections. That will show me what slices are connected to this pivot table, and neither of them are. I'm going to check both of them. Click OK. And now, if I filter it, I can see that it's affecting that top 10 list as well. Now, one thing we might notice, and I'll continue to filter so we can see it, is that although I, told, I spoke to you about adjusting the column width to accommodate for big names, and Sweden's probably a good opportunity here because these two products got quite large names. But you might notice that column is auto fitting as I filter, which is pretty cool. It's pretty clever that Excel does that, but it's also quite annoying at times. It's automatically readjusting the width of that column. If I continue to filter a bit, so we, we can definitely see this. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a good opportunity, that's a big product name, possibly the biggest. And I'm going to click in that pivot table. I'm gonna go for the Analyze tab. And I'm going into my Options button on the far left. I can do this by right clicking as well. And I'm going to switch off the auto fit column whips on update. I don't want that. I don't want this auto fitting of the column whips. I'm going to click OK. And now when I filter, no auto fitting has been done. Which is fantastic. That's what I want. And I'll have my top 10 pivot table list. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you do, and please check out some of our other videos, some of our other tutorials on our YouTube channel or at computergaga.com.